hey guys welcome to my channel my name is joy and this is joyce's diary so in today's video i will be gisting you okay i will be giving you a story time this video is only to tell my experience with a couple who are jehovah witnesses if you are a jehovah witness and you watch me this is not to, to bad mouth your religion in any way okay because i respect people and what they believe in as long as they are not pushing their beliefs on me we good where do i start with this story it was a bright day and the weather was nice it's a new house the front garden is you know is bad the long the grass have grown very long and i had to clean it because it's the front garden is right on the street and all the other houses their gardens were clean so it was just this one house that we just moved into and because it was empty for a long period of time nobody was there to clean the front garden so it just grew so i knew i had to clean it right away so this day it was the weather was beautiful the sun was shining you know it was really nice to go out and do something so i went out to clean the front yard while I was cleaning the front yard, I saw this group of people well dressed. If you know Jehovah Witnesses, you know what I'm talking about. They know how to create that positive energy and that energy of you can't say no to me. You know what I mean? You have to listen to me. And they were middle aged people. Most of them were middle aged people. And three of these people came to me, two ladies and a man. When they walk up to me, they greeted me and I got up, stood up and greeted them back. The other lady, she was a um, disabled lady. Guys, I'm just saying this because it, later on in the story, you understand why I mention it. So she's a disabled lady and this lady, she's very talkative. It seems like she's the talkative person among the three. Okay, she's the one that preached mostly. You know, she's the leader. Like. She had that personality so she she was the one talking to me and then she said oh do you have time uh, um to spare so that we can share the word the word of jehovah with you something like that so i said mm, looking at them guys to be honest i didn't want to say no because their energy their energy the energy i was getting from them was so positive you know loving the way they spoke was so loving sweet and kind and they were middle aged people my age you know and some of them are were a little bit older so i didn't want to you know i just wanted to give back the energy that they were you know giving out and when they asked me to um if i had time to spare to chat with them so that they can share the word of jehovah with me i told them i said as you can see i'm working so right now i don't have the time so i'm sorry and then if you know jehovah witness people you know they don't take no for an answer as long as you are not straightforward with them to tell them no i don't want to they will keep pushing you when i say pushing you not in a negative way but they will keep trying to make you to agree with them so when i said that i was busy i didn't have time to you know to talk with them the one who I said she's the talkative amongst the three, she said, oh, don't worry, you know, it's okay. We can see that you are busy, it's okay. But, you know, we can also schedule another time where we can come here and sit with you and, you know, and talk about Jehovah and the goodness of Jehovah. So when they said that, I just told her, I said, okay, no problem. The plan was when they come on that day, I would tell them, look, I'm not... Or, you know, I will be straightforward with them and tell them the truth and tell them that I'm not interested. So I got to I got to know that day. The lady, the disabled lady, told me that the man was her husband. So they were a couple. And the other lady was just a church member. The couple came on the appointment that we had. So I invited them in. And that was the biggest mistake I made. Inviting those people in. So when I invited them in, I gave I gave them seat and I went and brought water for them to drink and we started to have conversation. 
when they came my children were home you know it was it was on the weekend my children were home and the children were involved in the uh, study the jehovah witness study and you know these people they have their way with children okay at the time my oldest daughter who is now 23 she was 14 years old okay? and my youngest daughter was six years old yes the time i'm talking about so they were still young especially the younger one she was only six so these people they started to you know they were so nice to the children you know being you know telling them stories you know children like stories telling them stories about the bible and you know fascinating things about uh, um the bible characters and things and they got interested in it so they would tell them they would read the stories to them and then tell them to ask questions and they were asking questions and they were engaged you understand they liked it so after the meeting the study that day they want to make a second study and my plan was you know it's nice having you here you know but i can't continue with this because it's not my belief that was my plan i was trying to say oh i'm not interested in my children oh mommy please can can she can they come by the children started to put me on the spot sometimes on certain things you don't know how to say no to your children especially in the midst of strangers i don't know usually i'm a straight parent okay usually to be honest i am a straight parent and my children know me for that but this day i don't know i don't know i just felt for it and when the children asked that the people should come back and they were insisting and the people were being so you know nice and things like that so i just decided to agree so the next appointment came when they came nice again and the children enjoyed their company again uh youngest daughter even dragged the woman and told oh my mother bought me a trampoline do you want to see it she grabbed the woman here and dragged her to the trampoline the lady asked why is the trampoline not up yet then she said then the little girl told her that oh my mother is she's looking for someone to build it for us and then the lady right away she said oh but you know my husband can help build it right and the man said oh yes yes i can help build it and then she said when we are free then he can come so that day was on a saturday sunday they will go to church right so there was no free time the next day so monday was the day that he would be free but then on monday i had to go to work so i said no but monday is not a good time for me then i won't be available on monday and then the woman jumped in and said oh don't worry if um if you will be working and the children will be in school don't worry just give us a spare key give my husband a spare key so that while you at work he will come and build the trampoline for you and in my head i was like what give a stranger a spare key to my house i can't do that in my head now i'm you know i'm talking to myself in my head and she was like yeah she was saying it as if it was something normal I don't know maybe it's normal amongst the local here but for me it's not a normal thing i don't know you you only came to to um fellowship with me this is your second time i don't even know you i don't know where you live i don't know anything else about you and you want me to give my spare key to you so that you can come to be in my house by yourself and I was like, nah, in my head now. Nah. Then I said to her, I said, oh, no, it will be good because the trampoline is a pretty big trampoline. Now I'm looking for excuse to be polite with, you know, in a polite way to get out of that in a polite way. I was like, the trampoline is very big. It takes two people to, you know, to put it together. So I told him, I said, you will need someone to help to do it together with. So it would be good for me to be home so that when you come, we can do it together. And then he was like, oh no, don't worry about that. I can do that by myself. He said he can do it by himself or you will bring in another brother from his 
congregation to help him. So I was like, I would prefer that I'm here, I'm home, and then we can do it while I'm home. So they got to understand that I was being polite and I didn't want them to have my key. So they understood that. They let go. So I told him my day off. So when they left, in the evening of that same day, the wife texted me, telling me that her husband made time for me on my day off so that he can come and help me with the trampoline. So I was happy about that. And yes. I said, okay, thank you, and things like that. So on the day, my day off, I was expecting the both of them to come, he and his wife. But he showed up alone. In fact, his wife dropped him off, and the wife went. She didn't come in. So he said that she had something else to do. Okay, no problem. He and myself went in the backyard, and we built a trampoline and I told him thank you and he left. So now with the help that they have given me, I feel obligated to keep having studies with them. So they were, they were still coming with studies once every week. So one day I received a text and this text came from the husband. So like I said, usually when I'm communicating with them, it's usually the lady communicating with me. Because me, I wasn't even messaging them by myself. Most of the time, to start a conversation, they are the ones, the lady is the one that will always text me or call. I never take upon myself to call them for anything. I don't remember taking upon myself, taking my phone to call them, to even ask them, to even check up on them. Because I didn't want to entertain them. I was just embarrassed with the whole thing. I just didn't know how to, you know, say it to them. So, on this day, I received this text and the text was from the man and I was shocked. The man texted me saying that he wanted to go on a, a um, lunch date with me. So, I thought when he said that uh, um, if I had time to go on a date with him, I thought it was he was talking about the three of us. He, his wife and me. You know, that's what I thought. But no, he was asking to go on a lunch date with me and him. So I didn't know how to answer that question. When I came home, I explained to my daughter. Because my daughter is 14, going on 15, right? So she was old enough to understand. I showed her the text. And we talked about it and she was shocked that the man was asking me to go on a lunch date with him. Well, he didn't use the word date. He just said to go for lunch together. So I was thinking on what to do. So I responded later on and said, on the day that he was asking to go for lunch, I would be working and I would be doing a long shift, 12 hour shift. So I won't have time to go with him. You understand? So after a few hours, he texted me and asked me, how much do I get paid per hour? And what if he can pay me for the 12 hour shift so that I can, you know, take a day off for that day so that he and I can go for lunch. At this point, I don't know how to answer to that. I don't know how to answer to that. Because if you are telling me that you want to pay for my 12 hour shift so that I can ask for a day off, to give you my time to go on a, a, a lunch date with you, a married man. I was shocked. I didn't even know how to respond. I didn't even know what to say. And I decided not to say anything. I decided not to respond to the text. So that's what I did. I didn't respond. So I called one of my friends and she and myself were talking and I told her the incident. She said, ah, so she now started to think that maybe because these people are married, according to what I explained to her, the man is a British man and the woman is a white South African woman. So my friend was telling me, you know, these people, 
they are into this uh, um, surrogate, surrogate type of thing. Maybe the way you explain that these people love children, maybe they want to have children, but because the woman is her condition, maybe she can't have children and they're looking for somebody to be a surrogate for them. Maybe you should go, she said I should go to the date, to the um, lunch date, to hear what the man have to say. But I didn't think so. If that is what it's about, the woman would be the best person to approach me about it, not the man. If the woman approach me, there is more chance than the man approaching me. Because this man and myself never chatted directly with each other before. It was always between the woman and myself. And again, woman to woman, if that was the case, what my friend said, if that really was the case, woman to woman, I would understand her more than interacting with the man. But I don't think that was the case. But that was what my friend was thinking. So I told my friend, I said, I don't, I don't think so. This man is after something else. And I believe that whatever this man is after, that woman is in with it. So, let me take you back a little bit. I forgot I left some little details out. Okay? Before this man texted me that text, before he sent me that text, there was one time they invited me with the children to come and visit them. You know, to spend a day with them. Again, I was working. Because this during this time, I was working, you know, back to back. So I had no time to go to visit them. I think these people knew that I was working and they were always, you know, asking for these things because they wanted to, I don't know, they wanted to, they wanted to bond with my children for whatever reason, I don't know. So now my little daughter now was like, oh, mommy, mommy, can, I, can we go? Can we go? I want to go. So my older daughter, I asked her, I said, do you want to go? She said, yes. Bear in mind, we are new in the country. Then they don't have friends yet. And these people are being nice to us. So I thought, you know, yeah, we, you know, we are new here. So maybe these people can be, you know, a good friend to us where we can, you know, interact with one another and, you know, and have people to talk to. That's what I was thinking. So I agree that since I'm going to work and the children want to go with them, okay, let them go. Since my daughter is 14, she will watch over her little sister. That was my thinking, which now I'm thinking about it, I shouldn't have done that. But thank God, nothing happened. Okay, nothing bad happened because my daughter, my oldest daughter, she's a security by herself. You know, like she don't just, she pay attention to everything so i told her take care of your sister don't let your sister go away from your sight and that's exactly what she did and she pay attention okay and she said everything was fine after that they started to ask for more visit with my children and i i stopped that but even at times the woman would even volunteer oh since you're a single mother and you're working you don't have child care you know, sometimes if you need to, if you need help to pick up your daughter from school, I can do that for you. My young daughter, she's volunteering to pick my daughter from school for me. And I was like, no, I will manage. Okay. I will manage. Her sister will pick her up from school when I can't. Or I will arrange child care. So I didn't allow it to go that far. So after that, that was when now he sent me this message. When I didn't respond, she started to now text me, ignoring the fact that her husband sent me such message, you know, because she wasn't talking about it, pretending as if she didn't know about it. So I now decided to cut them off. I decided to cut the relationship because the relationship was getting weird. It was getting weird. I didn't like it anymore. I didn't want it anymore. So I decided to put her into it. Now she will call, text, call and I will ignore her. She texts and when it was getting too much, I blocked the number. Okay. Now when she realized that I blocked her and there was no way she couldn't show, because even 
if the king of time that this woman will not show up she and her husband will show up to my door and they will knock knock and when i even if i am in and i realize that it's them i won't open the door and even if i am not home before i leave to go to work i tell my children anybody knock the door don't open do not open so they try i think two or three times and they didn't get us to open the door for them they stop coming now they have a new plan since they're trying to reach directly to me and they can't get to me they decided to get to my daughter my 14 year old daughter so they wrote along this woman the woman i don't know whether it's the woman or the man but they wrote a letter to my daughter telling my daughter making it seem like you know she not happy at home and in case of any problem like that she have them they love and care about her so they, they care about her well-being and this and that so in case of anything when she needs someone to talk to she can call them they put their number in the letter they're talking about how they miss her they miss she and her sister and in case of any situation that they need to talk they need somebody to talk to they are there for them and these things these people were saying it sound loving but when you <laughs> if you smart you can know exactly what they're trying to do they're basically trying to make my daughter feel like i'm a bad mother and if she need in case of anything so that means if she even if I if my daughter do something wrong and I try to you know discipline my daughter in any way she should see that as a abuse and contact them for comfort and now they will start to undermine our family because they have the power to do so you understand but thank God my daughter she didn't fall for it so they sent the first letter they didn't get any response from her they sent another letter in her name so when i opened the letter same thing they're saying that they sent her a letter before but they don't know what happened to the letter so again my daughter they didn't respond to them so now they are thinking that maybe i am maybe my daughter is not seeing the letter maybe i am seeing the letter and not giving it to my daughter that's what they thought I think yeah so now they had another plan so there was a girl from their congregation I was going to the same school as my daughter but they were not in the same class I don't know I don't remember if they were in the same class or she was just in the school so the, now they have told this girl to come and make friends with my daughter so one day my daughter came home and told me oh mom this girl came and came and made friends with me you know children when they meet new people and they you know excited about it and they tell their parents about it so i think another day again my daughter told me you remember the girl that i told you that came and made friends with me the last time i said yeah she said oh she's from the uh, jehovah witness her parents are jehovah witnesses and she's a jehovah witness as well uh when she said it i knew exactly what was going on you understand and i said those people probably sent her to make friends with you she said yeah they did because she told me the girl told me that she knows them that they are nice people and this and that and the girl inviting her to go to church with her so i told my daughter i said stay away from that girl stay away from her they are using her to get to you and once I said it, my daughter decided to stay away from her. And she tried, tried, but it didn't work. So now they finally came to understand that my daughter wasn't falling for them. And they just left us alone. And that was it. If you enjoyed this story time, leave your comment in the comment section tell me what you think do you be, agree with me that it was weird or is it normal 
smash the like button and share the video as well with other people continue to support me guys i appreciate your support thank you and i will see you in my next video guys bye